welcome to Wednesday. I am still pregnant, in case you're wondering about that. Still part of my life. I'm putting on a little bit of makeup because I have to do something today that I have been dreading. I feel like a lot of people would be really excited about it. Like every time I tell someone I'm doing this, they're like, that's so cool, that's so exciting. Oh my gosh, that's so great. Everyone's like thinks it's a cool thing, but for me it's like a nightmare. <laughs> I'm meeting with a dietitian today. This is a good thing because this dietitian is going to help me know how to eat responsibly so that I'm keeping my babies as healthy as possible. I'm excited to learn how to keep them safe, obviously. But I've talked about this before many times. Food is like the one thing that's enjoyable for me in pregnancy. So to take that away is like really sad because on days where where I'm like really miserable, I don't feel good, I'm really sad or depressed or um, just in a lot of pain. All I wanna do is like eat something that makes me feel good in the moment, like In-N-Out or a Big Mac or a really yummy dessert. And that always makes me feel better, as weird or sad as that sounds. Like I said it with my pregnancy with Flynn and I say it all the time with this pregnancy, is like the one thing that like I have for me to make me feel better on those hard days. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that is my relationship with food during my pregnancy. So to take that away from me, it's just a really hard thing to accept. And obviously I'm gonna do it because I wanna keep my babies healthy. Obviously. I want to do whatever I can to make sure they are safe. It's just, I don't know, the selfish part of me is like, no. I'm sad and I also don't like talking to anyone who cares about health and diet and food and obsesses over that kind of stuff because every time I run into someone who knows a lot about like what a healthy food plan looks like or meal plan, I always feel like really judged for my choices because I'm not that person and I have a really bad relationship with food. I always feel like stupid and judged when I talk to you like that. I, I'm just like nervous that's how it's gonna be, but I don't know, I'm just like, my anxiety, of course, is making up worst case scenarios in my head. But yeah, I'm like very stressed about it. I'm gonna finish putting on my makeup. I'll see you guys after the dietitian. Oh, and I got an IV today. Okay, so that did not go well. Uh, nutritionist, wait, is that what it's called? The dietitian was so sweet, really cool. Like I wanna be friends with her type of personality. Lovely woman. She was great. I am not. Basically, <laughs> I do not explain this. She's lovely. I hope she never sees this because I'd be so embarrassed if she ever knew how I reacted to that experience. But basically the second I hung up with her, I sobbed and had a full blown like panic attack, like hyperventilating moment. So I'm gonna try to keep it together right now because I just put on makeup to not look like I just spent my whole afternoon sobbing. It's so weird because I don't think I can explain it in a way that makes sense. It was so overwhelming and there was so much information and it sounds so impossible. And my brain doesn't compute like never enjoying food again. <laughs> Like, I don't understand the concept of like, you just never get to eat good food. Like you just have to eat gross food forever. Like that's not doable. Like how do people live like this? <laughs> It was just really overwhelming and it's, um, you know, what I was hoping for was like, what's something I can grab on the go really quick and eat it or like have by my bedside. So when I wake up, it's just like, I'm gonna move on with my life. Cause I don't have time or energy or interest in like preparing snacks or a meal. Like it's more like, what can I grab really quickly before I run upstairs to edit or film? Or if I have energy, I wanna play with my kid. I don't want to stand over the stove cooking something. But it seems as though it doesn't really exist because you have, you can't just eat like a food, unless I was misunderstanding, but it seems like you have to have a car, but it has to be high in fiber and has to have this many things of fiber and this, it can't have this in it and it has to have this in it and it has to be served with a big serving of protein. Like you can't just eat a protein or a healthy fat or a carb. You have to have it with something else. Even snacks, you have to like look at all the things on the back and look at all the nutritional values, make sure it's the right thing. And then you have to go and find a protein and like make it to go with it. And it sounds like you can't put anything on it. It's just like dry meat and dry bread. 
I just won't eat that. Like I'm just like I will if I have to, but like I have no interest in that. So my brain is like hyper fixated on work and my option is to eat that. I'm just gonna skip it. And so then I feel guilty because I'm like, well, no, you have to eat it because you have to take care of these babies. But it's also not proven that I have gestational diabetes. So I'm like, well, if I don't even know if I have it, why would I put myself through this torturous plan of eating not good food, um, in my opinion, if I don't even have gestational diabetes. So I think I wanna try to take that three hour test and just hope and pray that I don't faint, that I don't barf and that I can get through it. Cause then if I can find out for sure, I definitely have gestational diabetes, then if that happens, then I'll be like, okay, you don't have a choice. You have to eat these things. You have to just get them down your throat and move on with your day. Like you just have to, you don't have a choice. But I can't get my mind in that mindset because there's this like inkling of like, but what if I don't have it? Like then why would I do this? I wanna try to do that because this looks miserable. I can't express enough how food is like the one thing I have that I enjoy about pregnancy that there's like, you just eat whatever you want. And like, I have a, this big appetite that I never have when I'm not pregnant. And it's like, ooh, let me eat all the yummy foods and eat all these fun cravings. And um, it's not like my cravings are even that wild. It's not like I just want like bowls of candy. It's like fruit. Like I wanna eat a couple peaches and I can't do that. So it's just, frustrating. It's like, it's not just like eat healthier. It's like eat gross. <laughs> I just can't, I can't wrap my head around this concept and I know that makes me really ignorant and like, I sound stupid. I know I sound like immature and stupid. I am aware, you don't have to tell me. It just sounds awful. Yeah, I just, I have no interest in eating a chicken burger patty plain by itself. Like, it's just not something that is appealing to me. I know myself and I know if that's put in front of me, I'll be like, I'm just not gonna eat because I would rather not eat than eat that. But I'm not just taking care of me, I'm taking care of the babies. I don't care about me and my health. I care about them. I'll do what I need to do, but it's just very overwhelming. So um, I hung up with her and sobbed because I just felt so overwhelmed. I was like, I can't, do, I'm not capable of this. Like I don't have the time or energy to like count out the fibers and the carbs and the sugars and the grams and measure them all and time out when I have a snack and when I have lunch and when I have a snack, when I have dinner and then time out an hour after and prick my finger and make sure the numbers are the right numbers and freak out if the numbers are wrong. Like I'm already miserable. <laughs> so I'm gonna not talk about it anymore because I don't wanna get more upset. And I know I'm a huge huge baby right now. This just sounds like, to anyone watching this, even me saying it out loud, I'm like, God, you're such a baby, just shut up and do it. I think it's just, it sounds overwhelming and confusing and stressful and like a lot of work. It doesn't sound like this is something that I can just have snacks and meals or like grab it and go. It sounds like I have to like, my whole life is, revolves around what foods I can eat. That sounds like a very miserable life to me. Yeah didn't enjoy that at all. I hated it actually. That woman was so sweet and I thought she was lovely and she's obviously very good at what she does. But uh, I hope she never sees this because I don't want her to like feel bad because it's not her fault. I know it's me and my brain and my insecurities and my immature relationship with food, but that's that. Now I feel overwhelmed. I don't know what to do because I can't do that. I can't do what she's suggesting, but if that's what I have to do to take care of my babies, I'm like, well, what do I do? Because I don't think I can do that. <laughs> so I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'm I'm gonna try to make a grocery list of the things I understood and have Eric get some stuff maybe tomorrow. Yeah, I just feel frustrated, defeated, sad, confused, and like the only thing I enjoy in pregnancy other than the fact that I get to have babies at the end of it. This one thing of like, oh, I get to eat. I get to think about, ooh, what sounds good? That's what I'm gonna eat today. It's like my one enjoyment. And it's just being like ripped away from me. Not just ripped away from me, but like, not only are we gonna take away the foods that you like, like, we're gonna force you to eat foods that make you wanna throw up. <laughs> it's fun, but we'll figure it out together. You guys always give me great advice and make me feel better when I'm a total hot mess. So I'm sure you guys will give good advice and I'm sure some people will make fun of me. I'm looking forward to advice and encouragement. But I painted my nails, so there's that. Okay, bye. We're taking a bath with my big old tummy. Flynn, what are we looking for? you we're looking for buried treasures in the back. Huh, Flynn? Yeah. <gasps> oh, it's a It's kind of hard to do. We used a bath bomb, so the water's been. Oh, boy. I found another buried treasure. Did I get them all? I don't know. We should feel around. Make sure we got them all.
We have our favorite treasure. And we got our favorite treasure. <gasps> Did you find some? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Panic attacks and buried treasures. That's what this vlog should be called. Did you find more? <laughs> I think they're playing with that. I'm gonna find one. I'm gonna find one. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Oh, you got it. Alrighty, we're gonna keep looking for buried treasure and uh, talk to you guys later about how the rest of our day went. Thank you, babe. I don't know. Two minutes of what? Adventure Bay. Adventure Bay? Yeah. Okay. Look at it on the phone. Let's look. What does it look like, Flynn? It looks like it's kind of different. What kind of bug is it? What color is it? It's kind of different. It's kind of different. It's kind of different like that. It's oh. kind of different like that. It is kind of different. That jumping bug? Yeah, that jumping bug is very cool. It's kind of like a different ant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like a different ant. It's kind of a cricket or something. I changed into that. <laughs> Can I see? Bugs. It's kind of different. It's a kind of that. Oh yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, it's kind of a good, different like that. Okay. Come back here. Come back to the picture book. Oh God. You got him. Yeah, he was running. Whoa! Look at those pinchers. He was running away. Yeah, he was running away Wait. too fast. <laughs> but you caught him. Yeah, but I caught him. He's running away. Go get him. Go. What is it? Pincher on his booty and a light on his booty. <laughs> Did you want him? No, I have to read instructions. Oh, you have to read instructions? Kind of different. That was it, Dada. That was it? That's okay. what it says? Yeah. Where I'm going with it. Let's have a tortilla talk. A tiny tortilla talk with Colleen. Let's talk about our troubled times. What a day, what a night. I'm embarrassed to even go into this, but I had a full-blown panic attack tonight. And oh man, it sucked. I don't have those often. I don't have anxiety attacks or panic attacks very often. I can count on one hand the amount of times I've had those in my life. This was by far the worst one I have ever had. It was like scary to the point where we were talking about going to the hospital. We didn't know what to do. It lasted for hours. It was not good. Um, so basically what I think happened, now that I'm looking back on like today, I woke up sad and overwhelmed this the Scorpio in me. I tend to like bottle everything until it overflows. You wouldn't think that with how often I cry and talk about my feelings on here. I have been very overwhelmed with all of the doctor's appointments and all the things I have to do to keep these cute little babies safe and healthy. So between all of my symptoms and how much pain I'm in and all the doctor's appointments every day, like I'm looking at my calendar, literally every single day I have something, some sort of doctor appointment. Between all that and then also the doctors contacting me and emailing me and asking questions and the IV infusions and all these things and I'm so grateful that I have wonderful doctors and scientists to like help me get through pregnancy like it's very grateful for all of it but it is a lot I just feel like I was getting to a point where it was like it's constant and it's constantly just people telling me what to do and how to do it with my pregnancy and how to fix this how to, these are things you have to do to fix your anemia these are things you have to do to fix your protein deficiency these are the things you have to do to fix your vitamin D deficiency these are the things you have to do to fix your pelvic girdle pain these are the things you have to do to fix your hip pain. These are the things you have to do to fix your shoulder and back pain. These are the things you, you have to do to fix your mental health problems. These are the things like it's like the list goes on and on and on and on. And that's just with pregnancy. On top of that, dealing with like my own personal issues, things that I've been struggling with, like with family things.
things and life changes and life things like stressing me out. Also my career, trying to keep my career afloat and trying to work and trying to not let all that die. And I just feel like it keeps going by the wayside because obviously my focus is the babies. So that's stressing me out. And it was just like all these things were being poured into my cup of things I can handle. And it was overflowing but I was keeping it inside and like trying to hide that like the water was overflowing and I wasn't telling anyone I was like I got it I got it I got it and then I think that meeting today just like I think it was even though it was just like a few drops of water it just made it like the glass shatter I just couldn't calm down like I obviously still am not great it was just really frustrating to feel like my brain and my body were not connected and I had no control over my body and how it was hyperventilating I couldn't talk, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't I couldn't catch my breath, I couldn't stop crying for hours. It was so frustrating and scary. I don't want to get worked up again, so I'm trying to calm myself down. So uh, we called my doctors and told them what was going on, and the options were to go to the hospital or try something else. My doctor just walked me through what I needed to do. I had two doctors, my nurse and my doctor both like contacted me and telling me things to do to try to calm down because I could not calm myself down. We were trying meditations, I was trying to just myself with games and videos and social media and I tried playing with Flynn. I tried, I tried everything and I just couldn't calm down. I couldn't stop the panic. And I was starting to calm down a little bit after working with my doctors and I just looked at Eric and I said, who is this person? Like, this isn't me. I'm stronger than this. Like, it's just such a weird experience to feel like I'm living in a body that isn't mine, that does things that I have no control over. So anyway, it's a very rough afternoon. It was scary and frustrating. Anxiety can be a total biznatch. Depression can really creep into your mind and ruin everything. It was just bad. I can't explain it further than that. It was just really bad. I'm sorry so many of my vlogs are like this. It must be annoying and I know it's hard to understand because I know I am so lucky and I have a great life and I'm so grateful for everything. For the fact that I have doctors I can talk to and the fact that they care about me so much they want to check on me constantly and I have family members who are here for me in a heartbeat and like friends who will reach out and talk to me and help. I'm so grateful for all of that. I'm so happy I have that. I feel very lucky I have that. It doesn't change the fact that it happens like I get these panic attacks and they're freaking scary and they suck and it's embarrassing it's just like oh so I don't have any fun <laughs> footage for you guys today sorry today was a bust but I'm gonna just go get in bed and try to sleep because I just want this day to be over <laughs> anyway that's all I love you guys and um thanks for always being so supportive and sweet when I'm a total mess tomorrow will be a better day tomorrow will be a good day I got it out of my system my glass shot and all the water is everywhere so now I can start with a new glass an empty glass and I can fill that one up and stress about those things so that's what I'm gonna do I'll talk to you guys tomorrow okay bye you can relax Colleen and Eric have a podcast the world is scary and we're locked in our home but now we have big microphones so you can relax that's the name of our podcast